Multiple companies led by Elon Musk's SpaceX are assembling mega constellations of internet capable satellites and a new player entered the fray this week, launching 34 satellites on a single rocket. As always, uh, ABC Science Editor Jonathan Webb uh, is keeping an eye on the skies. He's in the studio this morning. Good morning to you. Morning, Hamish. Busy week for space launches. Has been. Uh, let's start with this British company, OneWeb. Uh, not Jonathan Webb, no. I take it. One Web with uh, one B. Uh, yes. Uh, so is this a serious bid to take on SpaceX? It is serious, but it's different. So we've talked about the SpaceX program called Starlink here on Breakfast Before, and that is hugely ambitious. They're talking thousands upon thousands of satellites, and they really want to get internet to every corner of the globe. This is, they're looking at more like 650 satellites to begin with. They've started with, as you said, 34 that went up this week uh, on a Soyuz rocket from the Kazakhstan uh, launch site. Um, and they're a British company and they're hoping to kind of trade, if you like, on their kind of uh, Britishness, uh, as reported in the BBC this week, and work basically with telecoms around the world to get uh, access to different um, sort of uh, nations and markets. Uh, and so it's more about an economical fleet and partnerships rather than doing it all themselves, which obviously SpaceX has the capacity to do. And the CEO was quoted this week as saying, there's room for all of us in this in this race, in this market, and uh, of course SpaceX is active. Jeff Bezos, the billionaire behind Amazon, has a plan of his own, uh, but the CEO was quoted as saying his startup doesn't have anything to fear from, his words, these 200-pound gorillas in the market. And is the idea that this is only for those places that are hard to reach in the ways that we currently get broadband there, or, or would we all be moving to this sort of model? I think it depends how good it gets. It's certainly aimed at reaching places that haven't had any sort of internet or certainly fast internet before. They're also looking at things like aircraft. So SpaceX has already run some tests and they're working with the US military who might be an important client for them. And get this, they're, they're quoted as saying um, that the speed they're getting inside a moving aeroplane is 600 megabits per second just from the satellites they got up at the moment. If you compare that to what you might get at home uh, on, say, the NBN. I mean, some people complain that the, the NBN basically runs backwards, but you'd be lucky to get 50 or a or 100. And so they're getting impressive speeds already in moving aircraft. So I think there's a lot of ambition here and we it's, we get to see exactly how much consumer cut through it has. And what's the timeline? So OneWeb are saying they reckon they'll get their whole fleet up and operational by the end of 2021. SpaceX is saying mid-2020, certainly for the US. They need probably a good uh, 24 uh, launches to get global coverage, but only five or six to get coverage in the US. So we might see something this year on the continental United States. Uh, now, that's not the only fresh delivery to space this week. A major mission to the sun took off from Cape Canaveral on Monday. It's called the Solar Orbiter Mission. What's it doing? It's headed for the sun, as you might be able to gather from the name. Uh, not, not many volunteers for that mission, I take it. No, it's, it's definitely just a robot, and it's the second robot. So NASA's already sent one called the Parker Solar Probe, which has got closer to the sun than we've ever been and is still going. This one has a slightly different plan, uh, and it's now well on its way. It was a, a stunning launch, by all accounts. It happened at night time uh, on Monday here, here in Australian time and you know, hung in the the sky with a full moon for a good four minutes before it disappeared and NASA confirmed 90 minutes later it was on its way. It's a partnership between them and the European Space Agency and the key thing is it's going to go over the top. So we've, we've getting closer to the sun than we ever have before but this one in particular is going to see the poles, the north and the south pole of the sun which we've never glimpsed before. So how does it do that? So it's tricky, right? Because when you take off from the Earth, you pick, you, you're thrown out into space with a lot of momentum in the direction that we're going. And in fact, everything goes around the sun in that what's called the ecliptic plane, which you might think of as a kind of a horizontal plane around the sun. So to tilt its orbit up and over the top of the sun, it's got a couple of flybys planned. It's going to swing past Venus and get a couple of slingshots and also come back past Earth to try and use our uh, gravity to swing its orbit up and over the top and back underneath the sun. Now, if you think that's a long way to go, uh, there's some new uh, studies being published today, four in fact, uh, in the journal Science, revealing fresh details of the most distant object ever explored. What was that and how did they get 
this information. This is an am amazing and bizarre object. It looks a bit like a, a snowman. It's got kind of two lumps stuck together and it's way out there in the Kuiper Belt. We're talking six and a half billion kilometres from the sun. That's 50 times further from the sun than Earth, an extra billion past the orbit of Pluto. And the, the robot, the spacecraft that went there was New Horizons, so the same um, craft that explored Pluto and completely transformed our understanding of Pluto. It shot on past Pluto and is on further out in the Kuiper Belt and it shot past this tiny little object. It's only about 36 kilometres across, but as a really ancient, soft, icy remnant from the really early days of the solar system. So there's new images, there's a lot of stuff in these four papers. And in particular, they're trying to understand how it got there because it's such a bizarre shape with these two kind of you know, red coloured snowballs that have squished themselves together. So there's really important insights there into how things bunch together in the early days of the solar system, system creating things like our planet. Dr Jonathan Webb, thank you very much. It's a pleasure, Hamish.